I'd like to share with you an interview with Dick DiBartolo. Dick was one of the longtime writers for Match Game, starting way back in the 1960s version and continuing his work all the way through the 1970s version. Dick was an integral part of all the laughing and hysterical answers and questions that were given out on Match Game. We hope you enjoy this interview and get a chance to visit with Dick. So, Dick, I guess a couple questions for me, you know, first and foremost is you really were with the show from the very beginning. Um, I know from reading and researching and doing a lot of homework on my end that you are, in a way, the saving grace of match game. With uh, the show yeah. almost being canceled, you reworking your questions and everything and helping to make the 60s run as successful as it was. And then credit to you with the 1970s, with all those amazing questions you were able to come up with. Well, that that was great. I mean, I get I, I always uh, think, God, if Goodson had given me one percent of the show, I'd be a multimillionaire. Sure but would on, be. <laughs> on the other hand, I gave myself uh, 18 years of work. So that 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 part was good. Yeah, I was supposed to 10 months in. When Goodson called me in, uh, said that the, the show is not going to be renewed. So I'm just telling you now, if you want to go look for work. Right. And then, you know, I thought about it over the weekend and I went back and suggested uh, uh, the silly match game questions. And uh, Mary liked to pour gravy on John's blank was the was very first match, the answer. very first question yep. I ever wrote. And the question that convinced Mark, he said, well, what are they going to say? I said, they're going to laugh like you did. And mm -hmm. then they'll say meatloaf, mashed potatoes. So was uh, he taken aback because of the laughs? Because I've heard a couple stories that said that he was just so into the game itself. Yes. He, okay. Goodson, Rayburn, Rayburn would often call me and go, do you know that Goodson called me again and I got in trouble for making that joke about this? And yeah. Uh, and I remember one day, Rayburn, there were no matches. And during the commercial, Rayburn said, Dick, come out on camera, do something. This is like the deadliest thing we've ever done. Right. Uh, and and then when the show, when the, we went back live again, um, I just walked across the stage and Rayburn said, can I help you? And I said, I'm playing golf. <laughs> did, did, did my ball come through here? Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, Rayburn said, oh, my God, Goodson had a fit. He goes, this is not a comedy show. This is a game show. Mm -hmm. But all that ended when we started doing the uh, double entendre questions. Correct. Because it just led to laughs. And and actually, people tuned into the show for all the shenanigans that went on. Right. But you're right. At the beginning, no jokes. No jokes. Right. <laughs> um, were you with the show in the 1960s? Were you in the studio? Yes. Pretty much every day with everything yes. you were. You know, okay. if you if you want to see the setup uh, on YouTube, type in uh, Match Game, Dick D. Bartolo, Lauren yep. Bacall. I think I've seen. Is it the black and white clip? Yes. That's you'll exciting. see me. You'll yeah. see. When they cut to me first before I fall, yep. you'll see the board there. Yep. And that board has all the questions we had picked for that day. Okay. And so Gene Kopelman in the control room and I <clears throat> were on headsets. Yep. And and uh, she would say, Oh my God, you got what do you have there that's easy? And I okay. said, Well, why don't we do so and so? And she would say, oh, I do that. And I would hand it to a stage hand. And then the stagehand would put it in this fake, it sounded like a machine, but it was really the sound effects guy making that noise. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was there for every match game show. And then in the 70s, when it moved out to California, were you ever physically there or were you just mailing the questions in? I went out for the first three weeks. You did. OK. Yeah. And <clears throat> but then and also there's a long lapse between the New York match game and the new syndicated match game yeah and and um uh, an, uh, again another meeting with goodson he said listen 
Um, I'm moving match game to California. Do you want to go? I'll move you. I said, Mark, I'm, I'm a native New Yorker. And I said, mad is here. And no, he said, look, I'm, I'm keeping the New York offices. You can work here as long as you want. He said, yeah. as a matter of fact, as long as there's a match game, you'll have a check. He said, but syndication could take up to two years. Okay. So he said, just pick a show you like. And <laughs> It was great. He said, pick a show you like and go tell whoever it is producing it that you're now an employee of theirs. Okay. Um, so I worked on both What's My Line and To Tell the Truth for about two oh, years. Very cool. Very, yeah. very cool. Now, did you like working on those shows? What did you oh, do on those shows? Did uh, you do on, on To Tell the Truth, I wrote, and the credit on To Tell the Truth is special okay. material. Okay. So I would, would write um, ad libs for Gary. Okay. And also try to come up with silly things we could do on, on the show. Yeah. And, uh, one of them was the mill around, you know, about the mill around thing. I think I've heard yeah. about at, at, yeah. at the end of the show, people mill around. Yeah. And since there's only 10 or 15 minutes between shows, the celebrities are really in a hurry to go to their dressing room. So they, talk to the people who were on the show, but they don't really talk to them. And so I suggested that we send a stranger out okay. that was not on the show. No affiliation. Yeah. No. Affili and, and their job was each of the four days to talk to each of the four celebrities. So oh, we could cool. get, we could get video of them talking. And then on Friday, we brought out three people and said, oh, panel, a little idea that was, what a, you know, did it go over, did it go over oh, it's very funny. Yeah. I, and I don't think anybody got it. I think no one picked out the person, but that was the kind of thing I did is to try and just do silly things for the show. And well, on what's my line? I got, um, guests that they wouldn't ordinarily think of. I was big in boating and okay. I got the boat racing grandma and, um, yeah, just, I always just, wondered how some of these people with weird occupations or stories would come into the show. It was some had really fascinating stories. It's like, wow, how did we find those people? Well, they, they got every conceivable newspaper from across the country to get local stories. And, yeah. uh, you know, here's a guy that did the, Oh, let's get him. Uh, that was like, I think there were three people finding guests for that show. So that? yeah. Very, very neat. Sometimes you just never know these little behind the scenes things that, you know, the shows put together and the stories that people can tell about them are, are fascinating. Yeah. Uh, and also it was fascinating for me to see how people worked like on, I think it was, uh, it was Gary's show. So it was to tell yeah. the truth. And we had this motorcycle guy who did all these things. And, and yep. uh, Gil said, you know, can you get him to ship the motorcycle in? And in a meeting, they said, Gil, we expected that the guy was going to send a picture of like a big monstrous motorcycle. It's like this little thing. What yep. should we do? It's going to be anticlimactic. And, and Gil thought, and he said, no, we'll have Gary say, all right, so we're going to see this giant machine mm -hmm. that this guy was able to do all these feats, roll out that giant machine. Yep. And so he made it like a big thing to build it up in people's minds that it was big. Right. And then there was like, ah, he did it on that little. And I was thinking, what a brilliant thing yep. Yep. It is to, you know, make people suddenly realize that it was a, a big feat because he did it on such a inefficient or uh, such a tiny little bike. So that was fun uh, working with producers. Now, did you have a good relate? Now, Ira Sketch was involved. From oh, my God. Season, yes. Correct. Did you have a very good relationship with him? Great. A yep. And if you um, go to the Directors Guild website, yep. there's uh, a series of interviews with Ira Scutch. Yep. And the one or two of the last ones he talks about. Uh, how the show changed and he's, 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 I called him up and I said, Ira, thank you so much for giving me credit. He said, and then one day Dick D. Bartolo walks in with this question and, and he said, well, 
don't thank me. You yeah. saved the show. I'm just telling people. I said, well, it's nice to hear that you uh, talked about it in the I, think uh, the. I think the weirdest thing that, unfortunately, sometimes I think Ira gets a bad rap from just Gene with the judging and everything. And, you know, I think Richard and him had such a termulous kind of relationship. Richard, I think, had. I think he was like with them all. Enemy number one with yeah. Ira. Yeah. Uh, well, mainly with Howard Felsher. Howard too, yeah. Yeah, he wouldn't let Howard in the studio toward the I end. I heard, yeah, and I know was it eighty one where it, they changed over from him being executive producer or producer, and then it got changed with the daughter in law coming in or something like that. Yeah, you know, I don't know that. That was out in in Hollywood, but I know that uh, Richard was Richard and Howard. Oh my God, they uh, just didn't see eye to eye, and then also. Ira and Richard, Richard got really angry when they brought in the celebrity wheel. Yep, that wheel. Yeah. Because I and, think Richard only lasted five. No, it was actually, there were three weeks with the old set with the wheel. And then there were five weeks with the new set with the wheel. And you could just tell from those. It, it was like cringeworthy watching those final weeks with him. Yeah. He didn't participate. He didn't speak. He gave his answer and nothing. Yeah. And, and it I don't know if it was in person or it might be on those director uh, director's skills tape is yeah. Iris saying, look, Richard, I can see you're terribly unhappy. If you want off the show, it's really easy to let you just go back to feud. Yep. And and Richard left. So I guess the weird question about it, I think a lot of people ask. Because let's say if this was 2020 and some celebrity on a show just picked up and walked away, it would probably be national news. On, you know, <laughs> everybody would be talking about it. Right. What's weird is if you go back into 78, I think it was August of 78 when he walked off, there was just really nothing. It's like he picked up, did his final show, and that was it. Well, I think the thing was since people knew he was over on Feud yep. and Feud was big, I think people just thought, Oh, he just wants to do feud. Yeah. It was not one of those things where he just vanished. Right. I think if he just vanished, people would say, people would be like, where the heck did he go? Yeah, exactly. But the so fact that Ira, he was still doing, I guess a, Ira wasn't particularly upset that Richard was done. Oh no, uh, no. I, Gene, I, I, but it I, seemed like Gene was, Gene was, it's, I think Gene felt that Richard was his, you know, sidekick in a way. And, and there were a couple shots in those early weeks after Richard, who I guess I think McLean Stevenson said or something. Right, right. right. And um, I think Nipsey Russell sat in Richard's seat a couple weeks and something about, you know, I'm not Richard Dawson, but I have a tan just like him or something. Oh, like <laughs> right, that. right. Um, there were definitely some, some, some bouts back and forth that said that what he did was just, it was hurtful for the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't know. I didn't pick up on that, but you think uh, that most people were pretty happy that he just kind of picked up and left. You know what? I, I think, I think the staff was because he, as you said, I think it was very apparent right. to anybody who's a frequent that something really big had changed. Right. He went from being zany and nutty yeah. to, as you said, just grunting and holding his thing up instead, you know, he'd only say, oh, you know, I that's the furthest thing from my mind. But that's what I wrote. Exactly. Into just holding the card up and not caring. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when the show was in the 60s, did you have a particular special moment? I know you talked about the Lauren Bacall moment that was on the show, but did you have something that, you know, really stood out over the time that was like, wow, this is something I'll always remember from, you know, the sixties version. Well, this is the thing, you know, about the pickle thing. I haven't heard about that. No. Oh, okay. This is something Pam, you stand searched for it. So, uh, Bill Cullen was one of the celebrity team captains and right. i forget who the other one was and i'll just make up the questions because i don't remember the actual questions gene would say um name a vegetable farmers are most likely to grow okay and the woman said pickles oh. <laughs> and rayburn said did, did you hear the question yep. and she said yeah rayburn says that's your answer fine yep. second contestant name of thing the farmer's got pickle 
match. And then the third person, pickle. Yeah. So then we go to the other team and the person says pickle. Yeah. And Rayburn says, if you sit to the contestant, if you say pickle, yeah. I'm leaving. Right. They say pickle. Rayburn leaves. So Johnny walks Olson off that basically. walks off. Johnny Olson comes in. Yeah. Johnny Olson said, if you say pickle, I'm leaving. Yep. They say pickle. Johnny Olson leaves. Gene uh-huh. Coltman says, Dick, go out and take over the show. Yeah. So I go out and and I say, I'm not even going to ask a match game question. This is my lifelong dream. I want to dance. Yeah. And so I would have loved to have a copy of that show. Oh, would I, that, I'm sure people would go <laughs> nuts over it. That's what, I think the saddest thing is that we just don't have that many memories to, you know, see that see that version. And it was great. I, I, I wish people we got a chance to, you know, see it because I think that it would have such a huge following. Yes. And then Bill Cohen, Rayburn comes back and Bill yeah. Cohen says, OK, Gene, here's the deal. Backstage while we were waiting to come on. I said, how many people want to play a practical joke on Gene? Everybody raised their hand. Yeah. I told him, no matter what the question is, we all say pickle. Yeah. And then he said, now listen, unless all of us say pickle, this is going to be a disaster. Yeah. Everybody in on this? And they yeah. said, yes, and they did it. Yeah. And so he explained that because Rayburn was befuddled. He didn't oh, know, how could I this bet. be? I think the fun, the best thing of just watching him host. I mean, in my opinion, I, I put him up there in top five ever. Oh if, my God, he was the best. Um, I like him better than Barker and Richard and all that. Yeah. I no, love Rayburn his super. camaraderie that he had with the celebrities. You know, he'd go back and forth, and he'd really put the spotlight, you know, not on him, but he'd put the spotlight on on making sure the celebrities felt comfortable and had a good time. The, how funny he was! It's it's he was great. There's yeah. never going to be another Rayburn. Yeah. He never... he was super. You know he's a disc jockey here in the city. Yep, yep. Yeah. I remember that story. Hearing about yeah. that. Yeah. He started at Rayburn and Finch. I think. Yes, exactly. Very good. Yeah. You know, got got from yeah. there and then just caught lightning in a bottle. Started with his association with Goodson Todman. Um, I think he started as a panelist way back on the names the same. Oh, it could be. Yeah, it could he started be. there, and then it got to, I think, a kid's show. I think he started with Shoes Up Sides or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know his early... Make the Connection was show, because I remember seeing Betty White as a panelist on the very oh, early okay. days of that. okay. And then um, I think Match Game just was, his, it just grew into him. It was no, so... No, him. absolutely, absolutely. I think that's why a lot of the versions today... You know, there's Baldwin show. I don't know if you're a fan of it or not. Or no. So. I don't like how I, I've never been a big Baldwin fan myself, but I don't like how the questions that are made, they go for that derogatory answer right on the card. I think the fun of the game was to laugh and to giggle and to, you know, not write down, you know, yeah, absolutely. Alia, fool, you know, all that stuff. Absolutely. No, I only watched the first two episodes of the Baldwin thing. I like the set. I like the look, but I just don't like the format of it. Yeah. No, Uh, it's very different. When the 70s hit, obviously the format changed. Did you have any particular feelings on, all right, we're changing it from the 60s with the celebrity captain and, you know, not as many celebrities, obviously, on the show to a six paneled celebrity format and, did you have any 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 feelings that, you know, maybe this isn't going to work or maybe this is going to be even better than what the 60s was going to be? Well, they, they reformatted them, themselves. I, I had no, no part in that. But when I went out and saw a couple of shows, I thought, this is great. You did? Because, okay. yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, they, were, they wanted California, Goodson said, because we can get, it's so much easier to get a lot of celebrities. Yeah, he said. yeah. He said, that was that's one of the one, reasons why they moved. Is that right? A, 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 exactly. Prominent there. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I thought it was great. I you thought did. it was great. Yeah. And then also by then standards and practices, which is now gone again, standards and practices uh, was big and they didn't want any control over the questions, which is why they came up with that. The two questions come up 
and I you see. pick A or B. I see. That way, someone couldn't say, give A the one that we think might have more. It was just a crapshoot. Right. So the early weeks of 73 seemed like there was some questions that were still kind of filtered in from the 60s. You know, name a capital of uh, the U.S. or something. Yes, yeah. They they sort of alternated. Did it change? Did did Goodson come to you and say, "Listen, Dick, you know the questions aren't as great as it could be. The show's not really maybe lighting it on fire." Did he come to you and say, "Hey, we need to kind of revamp, you know, the questions again"? No, he didn't. Okay. No, we they they just I, I do you actually know the year when we went to all blanks? I think it was about week six or seven because one of the celebrities, I think, started it with writing boobs on the card. And okay. I guess the buzzer or the judge was like, all right, that flies. That's fine. Because there were so many laughs. So it seemed like the envelope was starting to get pushed a little bit more around that phase. Right. Ira has a funny story about that. Does because okay. Ira was in the control room with, back then, someone from Standards and Practices. Oh, really? Okay. And it was the first time <clears throat> someone said boobs. Yeah. And I returned to the guy and said, uh, can this go on the air? Yeah. And the guy <laughs> turned to his wife, the, yep. the standard practice guys, <clears throat> had brought his wife to the studio. Okay. And he said, dear, she said, uh, boobs is fine. Ira said fine in the mic. Yeah. And boobs became... The one of the most day. used answers ever. Yeah. I think that Howard Cosell, that was a big one. That first answers that came um, Twiggy. I think that was another response that a lot of celebrities would give on certain cards. Um, did you have a particular special, maybe it was a character like a dumb Dora or uh, something that you particularly really love to write questions maybe about? No, I, I like the dumb Dora and dumb Donald. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, Mr. Gene liked Mr. Periwinkle, so I tried to. Amazing with old man Perry. Oh, he I loved love those things, yeah. so I tried to write every once in a while. Do it, but it, it, Mr. Periwinkle was more limited. Yeah. Uh, as to what you could do, but that was Gene's one of Gene's favorite because he could do a little bit of shtick. I remember Goodson came on, I think, in the '76 anniversary show and had a question about old man Rayburn. I, have you ever seen that one? No. It was hysterical. Okay, I probably I might have seen it back then, but my Coincidence, God, coincidence! It was um, the question said, uh, "Old Man Goodson said I have to re uh, replace Gene in in 1999 or something." That's when he passed away. It was just so ironic that the question that he read was when you know sadly Gene passed. Yeah, G Gene had a very unhappy ending when they. That's what I've show. read and heard about. Yeah. yeah, when they brought the show back with uh, was it Ross that? Uh, Ross the, the yeah, Ross yeah. hosted it in the in the nineties, which yeah. I would have loved to have seen Gene. Yeah, it, that just broke his heart. Yeah, um, and he used to say to me every any time we had lunch, he said, "Never ever tell anybody your age." Right. Because when Entertainment Tonight said, happy birthday, Gene Rayburn, he's 65, he said, my phone went dead. Yep. And he said, I never worked again. And fortunately, Geraldo Rivera had that tribute to him. Yes, that's right. I, so. I've seen that little uh, tribute that they did on YouTube. It's a great little piece that's there. But it's also so sad to just have to hear him say that I should be the host, really, of Match Game 90. It, yeah. I think if he was the host, the show would have lasted longer. No, I, I think really so. Do. Yeah. And, and also Rayburn did the uh, the combo thing, right? Match game Hollywood squares. Have you got a chance to see it on buzzer? I'm no. just shocked that it's I'm shocked that they're, they brought it back to life because <laughs> for the longest time, a lot of people thought that Gene did not in his will say that that show could be replayed ever again. What? I never so, heard that story. I, I, One of the people in the game show community, I'm not sure who it was, said that for some reason Gene was not giving the okay for that to ever air because he, I think it might have been Lynn Rayburn who said something about it. Oh, it might, it might be Lynn. But the thing is... He might have been confused on it, but I don't know. Yeah, only because knowing the way contracts work, 
he couldn't I don't think he could have that right. No, no, no yeah. exactly. You, you know, like at, at MAD, when I sign a check, there's like a paragraph yep. that I am signing away the rights to everything and they can make it into a movie, into a bed quilt. They can, right. you know, and I, I'm sure a goods and contract would be like that, that we can use this endlessly. Uh, maybe, maybe there would be a royalty. Something on, like that. Yeah. But not that you can't play it. I, I, I don't So I, I mean, sure. Lynn may have, maybe that was Gene's wish. It could have probably been. Yeah. Yeah. I know he didn't like that break the bank series. He did one of his last game shows he hosted. Cause um, I think he just hated the format and I think he was just hosting to host something at that point. Yeah. Uh, break the bank. Was a, was that a local show? Do you know? It's some, I think it was in Canada that it was done. Okay. And I think he got like fired or replaced, I think 10 weeks into the show. Um, wasn't his fault by any means, oh, okay. but you could just tell that he was missing his match game. That yeah. was comforting. Yeah. He wanted that. Um, but on my point with the with the Hollywood Squares thing, I never w- could have imagined in a million years to see Buzzer air it. I think they've got about a hundred episodes so far wow. that they've shared. And the one well, was that was that Fremantle? Fremantle, yeah. Because they were, Hollywood was, Squares was um, was a, a Merrill Heder and uh, Bob yeah. Bob production. Yeah. And the thing I, I wish I wish Peter Marshall hosted it. I mean, if that was hosted with Marshall, I think that would have lasted a whole lot longer. I mean, wherever Goodson came up with Bauman, John Bauman hosting the show, that has to be the biggest wild card <laughs> and joke of, uh, yeah. of somebody being able to host that. Show. It's shocking that he chose him. Yeah. That, that is, uh, you know, maybe it had to be. Oh, actually, he just hosted the match game part. Gene right. hosted the match game and John Bauman, Mr. Shannon, uh, hosted um, the Hollywood Squares portion. You know, it seemed like it was a good idea. You know, it was putting two great formats and great shows together, but it definitely was lacking, you know, Peter Marshall or some of the other, you know, celebrity Hollywood Squares people that were part of the show. Yeah. You know, I think there was some crossover with some celebrities from Match Game that were there. I think uh, Charles was there quite a bit. Fanny was there. Uh, but there wasn't like, no, I don't think Brett ever did it. Um, I think you might have seen McLean or Bill Daly. Oh, OK. Um, yeah. They were both a lot bigger so, match games. But yeah. not, it, it wasn't the same. You could definitely tell from that. But it's nice to at least see it because for all these years we were like, what what is this version? What is this? We want to get a chance to see a little bit more of it. Um, but you can see that, you know, Gene was still himself, but definitely Bauman was hurting the show. No, I agree. I agree. I wanted to ask you if you've gotten a chance to see this book. I don't know if you can see it. I got uh, this. Let's see. Is, um, is that by uh, Adam? That's um, Ashley Hawks. Oh, Ashley. Yes. Uh, and it's, oh, it's you know, that, well, yeah. where is my copy? <laughs> um, uh, Ashley says, Dick, it's finally out. I'll send you a copy. He hasn't sent. I'm, I've talked with him quite a bit. I'll have to make sure I tell him that Dick <laughs> needs his book. Get it to him. Um, but Adam, I'm, I know Adam as well, um, and he's got his book. I just don't know where my copy is, but oh, okay. it's a, the pictures that actually came in this that are even from like the 60s with some questions is great. He did a wonderful job on it. Oh, OK. I, I just saw my I just saw a signature on there. I just saw my signature on there. It might be. Isn't that funny? I saw something signed. There's something from Gene here with a couple pictures there. Oh, OK. Um, there's a picture from the 60s. That's oh, my the, gosh. The logo right there. I think there's a section about you in here. Let me double check. Probably because I spoke to him a lot. It's and a, it, it was a fun thing. I got to host um, after the first year of rehearsals. I Ray saw Burn. that part that you got a chance. Here's some more pictures right there. Really, really nice job. Oh, you. yeah. Oh, that's, that's me. Is that you on there? That's me that hosting. That's the, that's the color. You have that on your website, the color picture. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, that one. They're both me, right? Yes, they are. They're both you. Yeah. That's so, very you know what? funny. Actually, yeah, I see your, uh, I was going to say if I see your name. I know there's a part in this that has. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. No, it's, it's so funny. I thought I saw my, my uh, signature. I might have had it. It might, it might have been something that I signed to Ashley. I know I saw a, a question. There's a picture of Gene. 
He has so much stuff on this. There's Johnny O. That's a great picture. Oh, Johnny. Oh, my God. Johnny was so great. Did you have any any stories with him, with Johnny? Did you you get it? Johnny, the only thing I remember about Johnny is he had this one joke that he did in the the warm-up. And I, I used to just stop and walk out to listen to it. Johnny would say he would interview the audience yep. and he would find like a middle-aged woman. And when he finally found the middle-aged woman who wasn't married, he would say, you know what, ma'am, you better not wait too long for your ship to come in because your pier might collapse. <laughs> and it, it was just so silly, yep. uh, but it just broke me up the, the way he delivered I it. I found the part on you. There's a part. Oh, section, okay. There's a whole section with you. Uh, oh, okay, great. great. There's a picture on the set as well. I don't think it's you, but there's another picture from. The oh, set. yeah, the Ken Abernathy. Yeah, oh, okay, great. Yeah. Um, he did. Uh, I'll make sure that he sends you something. There's, <laughs> there's a discussion on Diane because um, she was the. Oh, con- Diane Janiver. Was she, con- was she the contestant coordinator? She was the contestant coordinator, okay. and she was the one who did the speech. Yep. About what you could say on air. Okay. You don't say. Uh, take a leak. Yep. You say tinkle. Yep. You don't yep. say breast. You say boob. She had a hole. And she worked on both the '60s and the '70s versions, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. And pretty much the same role. She was the contestant coordinator. Yeah. And, everything. and, and also, she moved to California, so she might oh, have worked. She moved out. Okay, she did. Yeah. So yeah. she was one that wanted to move. Well, wasn't that fun? God, I wish I could find it. this book. It's like thousands and thousands of pages. Wow, it's great. He did an wow. amazing. I had to get it because I was just like, you know what? I need, and it's the backstage history is what they call it. Oh, okay, good. So it has, I think it even has a back part in the back that might detail the pages of where people and things are. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't believe how great it came out with pictures and stories. And it doesn't have a section with cast and crew. I know you're credited in it with everything too. Um, just a wonderful book. Wonderful oh, book. Oh, great! That's you great. A, I'm going to have Ashley make sure he sends the <laughs> express mail to you. Oh, and one thing that Ashley misspoke. Uh, he was on WGN uh, Nick DiGiulio show. Yep. Uh, that I'm on often is the story of the microphone, the long microphone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, what Rayburn. I remember the day when it grew. I don't know yes. if you heard the story about it. And everyone's like, what is this fairy wand? <laughs> yes, yes. Rayburn would, during commercials, go out into the audience to talk to the people. And the audience loved it. Yeah. And one day Rayburn came back and he said, listen, I love interviewing people in the audience, but I can't hear a lot of them. Yep. Is there some way I can get a separate microphone or something? And yep. they came up with the Sony. Actually, I, they didn't design it. Sony had. They had a, that special microphone. That that special microphone, right. And they got that for Gene. And so that was uh, just so he could go around the audience and capture voices much further than he could with his lapel mic. The lapel, yep. So, yeah, I think he wore that lapel for just the very early beginnings in yes, 73. Right. And then I think it was the final week, actually, in 73. Finally, it was short, but you could tell it would have the extension. Right. And I remember, I think Richard played a joke on Gene during one of the openings. And the thing is like this big <laughs> sitting on the table and he's like, what is this thing? And it, just, it led to a huge um laughing fit with everybody they were just like oh your fairy wand is now here what are you going to do with us now it was funny did you have any particular celebrities that you just really kind of fell in love with through working with on the show is there anybody that lauren bacall was the the number one yeah because on that clip she says i'm in love with dick d bartolo (laughs) and it was like (laughs) not love her after that i mean yes yes and like the third time we used to laugh in the dressing room and the second or third time we were chatting i said lauren what do you think she said complete betty we my friends call me betty call me betty and i always figured oh my god lauren bacall letting me call her betty i thought that that was uh, to this day, I think that's a, a great to be able to say that. And I she know, was Betty yeah. White was tremendous. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that there's some way I'm able to just talk with her at some point and just about all of her experiences and time on the show. I know she's done a few of these over time, but in a way to just kind of showcase her love of the game here on, you know, the video library that we're calling it, I think would be just absolutely amazing. Um, Cause she's such an important part of all of this. She really oh, is. Oh my gosh. I had uh, my first paperback book had just come out and I was over at mad and I picked up some copies and I said, Betty, can I give you a copy of my first book ever yep. that I wrote for mad? And she said, Oh yeah, please. Oh, sign it, sign it. Yep. So, in the introduction to the show <clears throat> where Rayburn gives the celebrities a chance to talk about what they're doing, yep. he said, so Betty, what's new with you? She said, oh, gee, nothing new with me, but Dick D. Bartolo, the writer who writes the questions, wrote this book. Yeah. Well, after the show, uh, Jean Kobelman said in my headset, she said, Dick, don't leave the studio. <clears throat> There's some kind of trouble with uh, what Betty said and you and standards and practices. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the suits came in. Yeah. Did you pay Betty? Yeah. I said, well, what are you kidding me? Did I pay her? Yeah. Why did she say this? I said, because we're longtime friends. Yeah. And she thought it, they said, well, you have to come down to the office and we're going to write up an affidavit that no money changed hands. It was ridiculous. Wow. So uh, that's why for standards and practices with stuff, you couldn't sing like happy birthday or all this technical stuff. Wow. Right. Yes. Even yeah. with Betty just being so gracious and just being able to plug <laughs> exactly. the that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So Lauren Bacall, she was based in New York. Was that correct? Yes. Is that yes. why she didn't travel out to the California version? Uh, it it could be. Appeared. I don't believe she ever appeared on yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, no, she lived out on the Upper West Side, not far from where I am now. Yeah. And and uh, no, we were we would. I mean, when I look back, I think, <clears throat> God, I was nervy when I was a kid because I remember she had done a Maxwell House instant coffee commercial. Okay. And I don't. <laughs> uh, I I said, Lauren. An instant coffee commercial? Isn't that weird for a person of your stature? She said, let me tell you why I did that. Yeah. It was three hours work one morning, and it was a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> I, said, doing that. I said, oh, my God. You want to I hope you get more of them. Possible. <laughs> um, when um, the show ended in the, in the 80s, you transitioned, you went over and did um, a little bit of writing on the Hollywood Squares version, correct? No. No, no Hollywood, Ho Hollywood Squares is, had nothing to do with Goodson Todman. I meant the match game Hollywood Squares hour, excuse me. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, it was just, it was, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's uh, confusing. Uh, with, yeah. Uh, yes, I, I just wrote all the way through. You did, and uh, you did the yeah. 90s version as well, too. I did, yeah. Goodson, uh, actually, Good. They were very generous to me up at Goodson Todman. I mean, I didn't, didn't get a percentage of the show, but I had a corner office in the Seagram building, yep. which was really amazing. And, you know, he, he when when the show moved, he, I told you early, he said, as long as there's a match game, you'll get a paycheck. Be, be yeah. And and you can tell that he was a man of his word. Yeah. Really? No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you said that you helped a little bit on um, Family Feud. Um, what kinds of writing did you do on that show? Or work? Like Family Feud, writing those uh, situations, those questions, and Tattletales. Oh, you did Tattle? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that must fun, too. Tattletales is fun. Uh, the the uh, makeup room with Jane Meadows. And I said, Jane, you and Steve have never. She said, oh, my God. She said, one day I had a dream. I was in a burning building. And I told Steve about it. And Steve said, I had a dream that you were in a burning building and I ran in and saved you. <laughs> so I said, <laughs> you, you, even your dreams complete each other. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. And, but the people who never matched was Dr. Brothers and her husband. You would think that. Uh, the doctor of her status. Uh, yes, like, exactly. They, they would be they so, uh, so in tune with each other. Yeah. Um, um, did you have a, have a relationship with Burke Convy? 
Um, no, here. no, I just knew I just knew Bert from walking into the studio and saying hi, yeah. and, and yeah. we didn't chat much. Um, I know that from just watching afar from the 70s with all the work that you did with the questions, I think without your work and your creativity on putting those things together, I just don't think either the 60s really or the 70s versions would have been as successful without the wonderful questions that you put in. So <laughs> oh, thank I you. I want to say thank you for all that work that you did to you know make Match Game such a hit. Oh, well, thank you. Sometimes those behind the scenes people, they don't get enough credit where credit is oh, deserved. Oh, well, 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 thank you. That's something. And, and Gary Moore. I was also very friendly with Gary. You were friendly with Gary. Gary seemed just like such a sweetheart of a man. He really did. Gary was, he, he was very funny. Also, he was very, very open. You know, he had a, uh, a, a, a bout with alcoholism. Yep. And we were sitting, I went to, went up to his house. I was also, I used to have a, another I worked a lot, had a side job writing for a boating magazine and oh, four okay. times a year I would yep. go uh, and do boat tests on fast boats. Yep. And and Gary said, listen, Dick, I'm a sailor and I have yep. a sailboat, but I just bought a Boston whaler. Yep. And is there any chance you could come up to Maine over the weekend, stay at my house? Yep. And would you take me out on the whaler? And yeah. put it through its paces yeah. as to what it can do. I don't so know I thought, what to do with it. Yeah. yeah. So I did all that. And, <laughs> and I guess the boat didn't sink. <laughs> no, Gary said, my God, Dick. He said, I was terrified on some of those turns and jumping wakes. He said, but I'm thrilled to know this is a seaworthy boat. And I don't have to worry about getting uh, caught in, in any waves. But anyway, he told me how we got hooked on on drinking he said you know i used to do the gary moore show and he yeah. said we had the time of our lives on that show and he said and the ratings started going up <laughs> and yeah. up and up and suddenly it was number one and then suddenly cbs was saying you got to keep this number one you got to keep and and he said suddenly from it being a laugh fun thing we were like going crazy. What can we do? What can we do? That? And he said, that was the beginning of my drinking. Yeah. And he said, the thing is, uh, and once let once I heard David Letterman said that his show was number one in nighttime. And he said, that's the worst possible thing that can happen mm -hmm. is for you to be number one, because the only way now is down. Yep. Uh, yeah, the and pressure of being at that one spot. I mean, you can't go any higher than one. No, no, you have exactly. To continue and, to keep that audience, yeah. which is and that's where we have uh, uh, a network pushing you to yeah. stay there. Yeah, uh, it's not a good thing. Yeah. Were you surprised when the ver when Match Game from you know the '70s was was on its downward spin when it started to you know you heard you know rumblings of it being canceled with everything? Did you think it should have been on longer? Well, the biggest. The one time in New York City, actually, the network killed it by yeah. moving it from 4 p.m. Right. to 11 in the morning. Yeah. Because we knew our biggest, just from the mail, our biggest audience was kids coming home from high school or yep. college. Yep. Yep. And at 11 in the morning, they're not going to see it. Oh, they're and in that was, they were there yeah. at school. They can't yeah. see it. Yep. And that was a huge drop in the ratings, which they I think they blamed the show. But was Silverman the one in charge with that? Uh, Fred Silverman, you yeah. know, I'm not, I'm not sure. I I'm remember sure. on the because I've seen the behind the blanks documentary, and I think no, it was Mike Ogans. Oh, Mike okay, Ogans. okay. I think he was the one that was responsible for that move. I still can't fathom how he even thought at that time that that would have been a good move. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't and know. It seemed like when it was put back into that afternoon slot, I don't think it ever really took on that 3.30 spot. I think it was a, a half an hour later. I think it was four. It was four. And it, yeah. I just don't think that it got it anywhere back to where it was. Yeah. Um, so I know Gene said multiple times that network vice presidents are very smart in the head or something <laughs> like that. But, you know, he's right. I mean, it's crazy that the amount of the amount of success that the show had that they would want to you know finagle it and move it around as much as they did i mean it killed it at yeah. least in my opinion no yeah, i in my opinion too
I think they still could have made it work well, you know, when Richard departed. We talked about it earlier, but I still think that it was the time slot that still killed it. You know, I think the format was still very good. I've seen, I don't know if you've seen the channel or seen some of the episodes that are up there on it, but I am almost... I'm very close to being done with the entire run from 1973 to 82. But McLean, McLean Stevenson came in in 81 and 82. And you know what? It's actually very, very good. Yeah. No, he was good. He was. He Are they good. running them in order? Do you know? I am. I'm doing them in order. Right. OK. Uh, you are. But did did is, was buzzer running them in order no they're all over the place uh, that's what i thought they're, they they get they convert like 40 episodes at a time so they i think they're in 74 right now during okay. the end of it but they started in 78 then they get another season oh, it's, okay. it's just so confusing yeah for me i've just gone chronologically i've gone from episode one and now we're almost at the very very end which is crazy that it took me about three years to get them all kind of compiled um now, now who who hosts your channel so i do i'm the one that uh youtube i have it on there so youtube we i what i do is i put all the episodes through my converter and i just spit them out as fast as i can oh okay and we get we get about an audience that every night at 10 o'clock and 10 30 eastern time um we have an audience of anywhere between 100 to 150 people that live chat and talk, you know, oh about the episodes God. and play along. Oh so gosh. every night we're showcasing two episodes, which is pretty cool. And we're just going through the entire run. So when I finish with um, the final episode from the syndicated run from 82, I'm going to jump into uh, the Hollywood Squares version, the Match Game Hollywood Squares version. And then I'll do Match Game 90. And then I really never liked 98's version with Michael Berger. Wasn't a big fan. Oh, of yeah. I don't think I'm going to do that. And I'm definitely not doing Baldwin's version. So somebody right. else go and do it. Um, you know, uh, is Fremantle own the, the Baldwin version? Yes, they do. They yes, do. They okay. Do. Yep. So okay. they're behind that and everything. Okay. Um, but I'm just uh, glad that uh, they uh, when, when, when you to do what I'm doing. Yeah. When you talk to the audience on YouTube. Yep. Um, how does that work? You know, I always don't you need something called a codec or something. So you can do either like a live feature on it or you can just post a video. So say I wanted to talk. We almost have 50,000 people as subscribers on the channel. It's nuts. Oh, it's great. Yeah. So I can put up a video that says, hi, everybody. You know, just want to say, you know, we're going to showcase these special episodes this week. And as soon as the episode is ready, it goes through YouTube's um, publisher um, feature. It's kind of like an editor okay. thing. And you can put it up to premiere. So if I have two episodes tonight that'll air um, that will premiere. And from that premiere feature, it'll live stream that episode right at 10 o'clock. So anybody that wants to watch it can join in, follow along, play along, ask questions, um, so is there a chat room next to it as it's it is. playing? Yeah, so it's a part of it, that chat room feature is right there. And it's nice. amazing how many people have just gravitated to it. You know, when I first started the channel, I would just put the episodes up at whatever the heck time. But now YouTube's been really good where they can have a set time, a set audience, and they can watch and play along at whatever time you want to control. Oh, that's great. So that's, that's pretty cool. So. I'm just I'm amazed that it's been almost 10 years with how this channel has grown pretty much grassroots. Um, me sharing whatever I had from my collection has just been able to have not just you, but um, I'm supposed to be talking with Bill Anderson later this oh week. Oh, my gosh. I heard. Show. Um, Lucy Arnaz was another celebrity that played. She wants to talk about how she did on her week. Oh, great. Um, That's great, Nick. Um, Amazing. I have, um, who was the other one that was involved? Oh, Roger Dobkowitz. He wanted to talk. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about how he was, you know, the, the guru, the production assistant. And he was kind of like out the, in California you know, trades yeah. Yeah, of, of that time. You know, I know Roger went on to produce, um, you know, kind of led to him being able to produce The Price is Right. Right. Um, so he has some stories there. Um, I I have reached out and tried to get in touch with Betty White's publicist. Haven't heard anything yet. Fanny's publicist. 
Um, but I think that they, well, personally, I would like to have as many people who are living, who have participated, whether it's a contestant or a celebrity or somebody that was behind the scenes, get a chance to talk about their time on the show and kind of just make it a part of this video library and, and uh, you know, preserve it for as long as we can. I think no, it's important that people tell their story. No, it's great. It's I'm really like, great. Yeah. Well, I'm beyond appreciative, Dick, of you taking the time today of just talking about everything. No um, problem. I think it's um, I think it was absolutely wonderful to hear your stories and time. And I know for me, I, I truly appreciate all the questions and things that you have um, been able to make the show such a hit with. Well, thank you. That, that is super. And um, I just happen to have one on my desk. This is what a match game question looks is like. Is that what, what it looks like? Yeah. Is that 60s question right there? This one is 19, uh, July 1977. Oh, 77. Uh, oh, this, <clears throat> you know what? We, when we had standards and practices, we would write questions that yep. we knew would never get on. Oh, you did. Okay. To make the other yeah. ones yeah. look yeah. tame. So this one I know would have never gotten on. Uh, Gene Rayburn said to the contestant on the match game, when the score is evenly tied, we have a tiebreaker, not a blank breaker. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think they would have allowed that yeah. one to go five. No. You're 100 percent right on that. No, no. Although you have time for one more. Sure, of course. I wrote this for match game PM because we were told the questions could be a little more out there. And I wrote this as a joke, and it got on the air. Okay. Unlucky Louie was yep. so unlucky. Yep. How unlucky was How he? How unlucky was he? Oh, Thank you. Up, audience. He Don't was so go. unlucky. When he went on a diet, he lost two inches. Mm -hmm. But he didn't lose two inches from his waist. He lost it from his blank. And that got on the air. And they said that from— That happens to be—is that the episode where Marshall Wallace said genitalia? Oh, you know, I'm not sure. It could be. I, I'm going to have to be. share it with you because it's up. It was censored, um, but I think it. it I oh, think that might right. be it. It is that one. Yeah, that, that one is <laughs> one of the funniest ones ever. I, they were in hysterics. Yeah. But so. you're right. With the PM version, um, you could definitely push the envelope a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that that's what made that one. A lot of people identify Match Game PM as the one they like the most. Because it pushed that envelope a little yeah. bit. So um, do you put an episode up every night? Every night. Every oh night. God. Yep. So we're very, I can't believe we're very close. So we're doing two right now. From the popularity, it was one. But now because wow. everybody just gravitates to it and wants to watch more, two episodes a night go up. Wow. Oh, I'll stop over there one night. Yeah, I think if, there's a chat feature. And if you do you have a, obviously you can chat in and just talk to the audience and say okay, hi, everybody. Very, I think they okay. get a huge kick out of it. Okay, very good. Well, very I, good. I know I'm a, a subscriber and a follower of your YouTube channel. And uh, I love your content that you put out as well, too. Well, thank you. Well, Dick, I just want to say thank. I can't believe it's been an hour of us. Uh, oh, I know. I know. But that it's was good. absolutely Now, fantastic. is this something you can use on your channel? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We can okay. share cool. it and make sure people get a chance to see it, so long as that's okay with you, of oh, course. Oh, yeah, that's fine. We'll that's probably good. edit it up and do something cool with something match game in it, and um, I think that people will love it. I really do. Yeah, and I just want to mention one other thing. Do you know about the Mark, um, the, the director, Mark Breslow? Mark Breslow, yes. You know about the videos that he did in the control room? Yes. Oh, okay, good. We actually okay. have an episode on the channel with his director's cut. That's what I'm talking about. You do. Because from, um, somebody recently uh, sent me an email saying, was that pre-recorded at the opening? Because back then, how could they change so fast? And I said, no, it was done live. Yeah. And I referred him to those, to those so tapes. Episode, it was episode, if you type into YouTube, it's episode 14, 1416 from 79 is up there in two versions. It's up there with just the regular, you know, broadcasted version. But then the director's cut is up there. Perfect. What I did, because the, um, the the version with the director's cut, the video is kind of, you know, not that great. It's kind of grainy. At least the first segment of the show, I was able to use the broadcasted version and wow. made it the video. So I edited it up to make it look really nice. Wow. 
So, so all these technical things that you can do is pretty fascinating. No, it's great. It's just, it's, it's just, you know, it's so funny because uh, I do um, World News Now on ABC once yep. a month, and I yep. do it from here. Yeah, isn't it, isn't it amazing? It's astounding. Yeah. I actually particularly, I like being able to be in, you know, your home environment in a way. You don't have to travel. You can right. do, you know, whatever piece you can, thanks to technology. Yeah. No, it's amazing. It's I've got, amazing. I do um, my own, um, I have a local talk show that I do through sports and everything. And we've been doing that, you know, virtually right here. And I kind of like it. You know, I can share whatever content I need to right from the computer. Makes it easy. No, it's great. It's Makes great. It easy. Well, Dick, okay. I hope an awesome rest of the day i greatly appreciate all of this time you took today and um i know from afar i'll be uh watching and and commenting and everything on your stuff and uh, i hope you can stop by one of these nights i will do okay nick thanks so much thanks so much okay. Dick. greatly appreciated have a blank week oh you too <laughs> okay bye bye, -bye. Just want to thank Dick D. Bartolo for taking the time to talk with me and giving a little bit more information on the history of everything that went on behind the scenes and with his work on Match Game. So thank you, Dick, and we hope you all enjoyed that interview.